let's stop doing things just because people are guilting us into doing them on social media and let's start doing the things that we intuitively know will make us more successful, period. Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another amazing episode of For the Love of Money. I am really excited for today's episode because I'm sitting down with one of my favorite guests in the whole wide world, and I love this guest, my wife, Lori Harder, the amazing self-love expert, best-selling author, former fitness expert, amazing human being at everything she does, and best wife on the planet. Okay, now I might be being biased and gushing a little bit, but here's what I know. People love these episodes when we just let loose and chat together and share like what's new for us coming up and how are we going to get there and and what value can we offer to you? And that's exactly what we're going to do. Matter of fact, we are going to share six hacks to success this year. Six hacks that will make you more successful this year because we are doing them ourselves. Now, some of them we've already done. And a couple of them are going to be brand new to us because we know we need to do them and you probably need to do them as well. So I'm so excited for you guys to sit and listen to the six hacks that we're going to be doing that you can do as well to have more success this year. And stick around to the very end because we are announcing a very exciting announcement for probably the first time you're going to be hearing it, a really cool collaboration that Lori and I are going to be doing for all of you this year. So six hacks to success this year. I cannot wait to see what value you get out of this. Hey, babe, how you doing? I'm awesome. This is so much fun. I seriously love doing these shows with you. Now, by the way, I love doing my show with all the guests I have, but I think I might do love doing my show with you the most. I love that too. And I think people like it. I know they like it. I almost said love, but I'm just not, <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. We're going to add some massive value today, but check this out. When I do a show, and I know we have different podcast styles, but when I do a show, I always make everybody start with rapid fire. So I'm making you start with rapid fire questions for people to get to know you in a hurry. I cool? love this. I'm totally ready. I have my questions for you and I don't know his questions. So I'm a little nervous. I know. I don't know yours either. All right. <laughs> it's kind of intense sometimes. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I promise it's painless. What's one of your favorite quotes ever? Oh, okay. So I have so many favorite quotes, but... I think that right now I still am hooked on that Tim Ferriss quote about uh, having the tough conversations. So it is the most successful people um, in life are the ones most willing to have tough conversations often. Mm, Love it. And I, I totally slaughtered that, but that would be it because I'm all about making sure, I'm telling you, everyone thrives when they do the tough stuff. All right, lay one on me. Okay, so I want to know one thing that you are going to leave behind from last year Ooh. or stop doing? I'm going to leave behind this free will of handing out yeses left and right that I did last year. I'm going to treat my yeses like gold bars this year. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's no secret that I say yes to things that sometimes affect you and then you're like, damn it. <laughs> All right, give me one. All right, best book you've not ever read, but one that you recommend. Besides your own. Okay. So, I mean, right now I'm reading Ray Dalio's principles. And I would say that those are pretty solid. Like his principles are really, really solid. So the beginning of the book, a little slow, move into the principles. I know they're good because you like you can't even get through a page. You're like, wait, wait, Chris, this. And wait, wait, Chris, this. Like, <laughs> He's like, I'm reading my own book, Lori. I do. I have no, to like, put my foot down. you're reading my book with me. <laughs> I have to put my foot down because you're reading next to me you, like every two minutes. Like, it's like at the me. movies. <laughs> it is. Okay, you guys, you have to know this about Lori. I know we said rapid fire, but sorry, tangent. When we go to the movies at the movie theater, she's that person that will talk about the movie out loud. And I have to be like, shh, Lori. I whisper. Nobody can no, hear me. No, it's not whispering. You're like, oh, that would never happen. Here's why. Oh, no, that- I don't. <laughs> okay. I, wh- I whisper and I, I basically like to repeat when they're funny because I feel as though I get to be comedic with them. <laughs> okay, lay another one on me. All right. One thing you're going to start this year. 
one thing I'm going to start doing this year. Is that what yeah. you mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start, and I can talk more about this later under the, you know, the six hacks to succeed yeah. this year. But I'm going to start tracking what matters most to me. I haven't tracked it before. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. All right, one thing you're challenged by right now. Organization of my time. Mm. Okay, so best beginner business tip. Ooh, I like this one. Best beginner business tip is... So you didn't like the other ones? <laughs> wow, I thought this would be easier because there's so many of them. Get a good accountant and a good bookkeeper because that is nobody's wheelhouse unless the business you're starting is accounting mm. and bookkeeping. Give me business tip number two too so they can also have one more. Learn how to sell on social media. Like before yeah. you can afford marketing, before you can afford funnels, before you can afford advertising, before you can afford any of that, you can sell on social media for free and there's no excuses to not start generating income. Oh my God, I'm so glad you said that because in the beginning, Chris, that's all that we did. Mm -hmm. I sold all of Bliss Project only on social media. Yep, we've actually become very good at selling on social media and it's great because when you don't want to spend a ton of money, especially when you're getting started, Mm -hmm. then it's a great way for you to generate revenue without Mm -hmm. spending a bunch of money. Sold out my first Bliss Project, 200 people. Only on social media. So it can be done, you guys. All right. Awesome. Go ahead. All right. Next one for you. What are you grateful for today? Hmm. Oh, limiting me to one. Honestly, I'm super, super honest. I'm so grateful for you because you have been in a place of like massive motivation and I'm not in a super clear place and it's pulling me into motivation and clarity. And I think that speaks so much for who we're around. So I'm most grateful for you. Oh, thank you. And I love that I can be there for you like that. Honestly, if if people knew us over the past 16 years together, that's one of the things that makes us tick so well is mm-hmm. we are totally okay with whatever season the other person is in and we are totally willing to step up and kind of be the opposite season while mm-hmm. that person figures out what they got to do. So mm-hmm. I love that. Oh, my turn. Okay. Okay. I know all of the ladies want to know this. What's your best relationship advice for... Just thriving together. Understand the difference between good naked and bad naked. <laughs> what does that even mean? I am so... I totally don't even know what that means. <laughs> like, I forget what movie it was in, but they were <laughs> so talking about right the difference now. between good naked and bad naked. What it is was that? like sitting cross-legged at the sink, let's say, oh, picking at something <laughs> would not be good naked. <laughs> that would be bad naked. <laughs> All right. Okay, but I got a real one. <laughs> My real one is this. I'm like all about the bad naked. So maybe <laughs> I maybe I need to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's a you real walked one. Walked in on so much bad naked <laughs> here's, here's I'm bright red. I think you are too. <laughs> all right. No, here's oh. a real real relationship tip. Actually, that one probably is one, but here's a real one. <laughs> Communicate early and often. Like, don't let that shit build up. Communicate oh, early and often. It's better to put out a whole bunch of, you know, little baby sparks than it is a forest fire. Yes. That is like, that would definitely be mine as well. And that's not easy. That takes time to get to by slowly, one by one. Okay. And then my very last one for you is this. What's something you've done that uh, generous recently? Okay. So I I have this new rule that is kind of like, I guess it's just been a rule, but I'm I'm just declaring it now. I tip 30% or more like on every single thing that I get, whether it's like basically like hair or whether it's um, at a coffee shop or whatever that is. Like it's always just my 30% rule. I love my that. nickname is Big Tips. <laughs> <laughs> Can I start calling you Big Tips? <laughs> We're never going to get through this thing and add any value, are we? All right, let's start adding some value. All By right. the way, I love that I didn't that get to ask my last question. Oh, you have another one for me? Five. I'm scared now. Okay, go for it. Best advice if you have an unsupportive spouse with your oh, goals. Wow. Best advice if you have an unsupportive spouse with your goals. Okay, oh, I have a really good answer. Okay. You have Don't to... Don't let me down. No, you have to forge forward. At a hundred percent, regardless, until you have enough evidence for them to see that you are serious mm-hmm. about whatever it is you're trying to do. What if it takes like two years and then you it have is to rough. forge forward with or without them for two years 
so they can see that you are serious about what you're doing. And listen, I know this is rough. I know this is not easy. I know that this is this is like maybe not the advice you were hoping for if you're uh-huh. listening to this right now, but this is the advice that's accurate. When you have been serious about where you're going and when I have been undecided if I want to go there, when you demonstrated this path of, holy crap, she's really going regardless, with or without me, then that forced me to get on the rocket ship or not, so to speak. Mm. If the other person, right, the, the motivated person is not unapologetic about where they're going, and if they're not going far enough and consistently enough where they're starting to leave a little bit of evidence behind that they're going with, with or without the other person, mm-hmm. then the other person never is forced to choose and they're never forced to support you, mm-hmm. right? They can have their cake and eat it too. They can kind of support you a little bit once in a while and then they can make a, a big deal and not support you once in a while as well because quite honestly, you're not convincing them that you're serious about where you're going, mm-hmm. right? You're not burning the boat, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So go where you are going unapologetically, regardless, leaving enough evidence that you are going there with or without them so that they're forced to make a decision to support you or not. Oh, I love that because it took me right back to just one minute share on this because I think this is vital to what we're talking about because this is going to be 90% of the people who listen to this who are going to apply what we're about to share with them. I remember the moment of, you know, the off and on that you would support me and mm-hmm. being like, I literally can't do this and giving you an ultimatum Ultimatums. of you either fully support me or you just basically don't. And either one is fine, but stop the back and forth because it's an emotional roller coaster. And for me, what happens is some of you are like, okay, but what if you're not 100% sure on your goal? I had no idea if I was going to do this or not, but you not having faith in me or toggling back and forth actually made me be like, I better buck up and just like have like make this happen and have all the faith in the world. And that's what I chose. I just kept, no matter what fear came up, I just kept saying, all right, just keep moving forward, keep moving forward. So it actually kind of helped, believe it or not. And for anyone who's listening, who's like, oh my God, you're speaking to me right now, but I'm Mm -hmm. still scared. Listen, uh, knowing myself well enough, I would not have had to choose to go all in in a few different times in our life if you allowed me the leeway to not have to choose, mm-hmm. right? I would have continued to be one foot in, one foot out, speak out of one side of my mouth and act out of the other once in a while. Your ultimatums that you've given me a few times in our marriage have been game changers. And likewise, you've done the same for me in different business things or goals that we've set or things that I've wanted to kick to the curb that didn't quite reach their expiration uh, date yet that we knew we had to live out on. So I'm so grateful that, you know, for the tough love, basically. Mm, so I love it. Okay. Well, massive value already. Let's go ahead and get into the I like six. how you just made sure we... <laughs> Great job, guys. Massive value already. <laughs> oh, I love it. And Okay. Never mind. Let's get into the six hacks to succeed this year. And really what these are, these are things that you and I are going to make sure that we're doing this year based on the conversations that we've had. And some of the things we've already done in the past and some are going to be brand new to us. But honestly, we really just wanted to give everybody six very unique, effective hacks Mm -hmm. that they can do in order to just have the most kick-ass year of their life this year. Like enough playing small, enough being unhappy, enough living in scarcity, enough not having your business take off, enough not having your relationship take off, enough not liking yourself. Like this is a year to kick all that shit to the curb. Mm-hmm. And these are six ways that are going to help you do that. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, and you know, I want to talk to all the people out there with this and not just the people who are like already gung-ho and feeling amazing about the year. Hey, I get it. I started this year off slow already. Like, and when I say slow, I'm like, why don't I feel this motivation? Why don't I feel all these ideas coming? What's going on? And the more that I gave myself permission to just kind of like start taking action on things I enjoy, the more I've been able to find that motivation. So don't freak out if you're not like, oh my God, I'm going to run through a wall because I don't actually think that that's always great either. No, uh -uh. you have to honor the season that you're in. And absolutely. You've been doing such a good job of that, you know, thus far. So what's your first thing? What's your first hack to make sure you have an epic year this year? My first thing, and this is always, this has been huge for helping me. Number one is hyper self-awareness. Like, Hyper self-awareness takes such massive honesty. You actually don't like to read it on paper when you write it. (laughs) (laughs) 
And for me, that means that I have, I don't do well with thinking after 3 Mm p.m. So if there's anything that requires willpower or motivation, like if it's something I'm afraid to do, if it's an email that I have to write to maybe try to get like a strategic brand partner, if it's somebody that I'm doing a big ask for, if it's something that I'm really uncomfortable with, I have to do it basically between like 12 and 3. And you're saying this is something you've become hyper aware of? So hyper aware because my willpower is heightened during those times and everything after that, when I start getting tired, everything, like the fear goes up, the willpower goes down. So hyper self-awareness of the amount of energy that I actually have to expend, the amount of things that I've been known in the past to get done, like look at my track record. Mm -hmm. How much stuff do you actually do on that to-do list? Like be so hyper self-aware of how many hours you're actually dealing with in order to get the these new goals or these new habits that you that are gonna move the needle forward. Write down, is it one hour a day? Do you have 20 minutes? What is it? So know what you're working with first. Hyper self-aware of does this amount of time, is it one hour? That means probably only one goal you're gonna work on at a time. So you can only take on one task at a time. So hyper self-awareness. And I just want to add to this. I know this one's yours, but what I've seen you do has been awesome, right? So not only have you been hyper self-aware about how you work and how you tick and what's going to be beneficial for you and productive for you, but you've also spoken up about it in the very Mm -hmm. recent past, let's say six to nine months, right? So something switched in you. I think you've always been aware of, hey, I'm... I don't work after this time well, I don't do this, I don't do that, or you know, this might affect me. You've always been aware of that, but becoming hyper self-aware and speaking up about it has made it easier for me to then know how you tick Mm. and to plan things for us and to know when to approach you on something. And I feel like it's, here's the great irony of it. Other people who are not hyper self-aware of when they're going to be productive. So they just drag the whole dang day out. Mm -hmm. They think they're getting more done, but they're not. We're getting more done now because I know when to come to you with something, when you're going to be effective, when you're going to want to talk about it because you've been hyper self-aware and have spoken up. Mm. I think I used to be ashamed that it that it was a smaller amount of time than like, you're really good at getting focused for longer periods of time. And I am not. My burnout is much quicker than you. So for me, I do better making sure that I'm recharging more because then my amount of time, even if it's an hour or three hours, is actually so much more productive if I'm making sure I'm like refilling those willpower tanks as well. And I just want to say hyper self-awareness means knowing my temptations really, really well. Yes. So hyper self-awareness is also, hey, when that food is in the house, I'm eating it and then it's going to make me feel like total shit. Or hey, when I have all of this around or when these things are happening, this is when I'm tempted by whatever. Um, and hyper Hyper self-awareness too. I just want to talk about this in relationships as well real quick, because for those of you who have any relationship goals this year, hyper self-awareness is when do you... I think so many couples forget this part, like what really makes your relationship thrive and what doesn't make your relationship thrive? I saw a quote that I loved. It was again, something like the most successful people just make sure they get tempted less. And I think this is so important for uh, different couples, just as far as even when I say tempted, like social media or different things that can start to sidetrack you. Like if you have, you're going out for three or four girls nights or the guy's going out for three or four guys nights, like that's fine if it's not causing a problem, but where are the problems in the relationship? You actually have to talk about these things before they happen. And I would even add to that hyper self-awareness when it comes to relationships is when you are hyper self-aware of when you want to talk about important things and you communicate that to your partner, mm-hmm. now your partner knows when to bring things up and when not to bring things up. Because every conversation is a conversation worth having, but not every moment is a time worth having that conversation, mm-hmm. right? And so when you're really aware of when's a good time to approach her on this? When's a good time to approach him on this? Mm-hmm. And that's as simple as asking them, hey, when I want to talk about these types of things, you know, what time of day or how would you like me to ask if now is a good time to talk about these kind of things? Mm-hmm. So be aware of your partner's, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Best times to have the, the best conversations. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not putting it very eloquently there, but I think people kind of get the gist of the message. 
Mm-hmm. I love that. I'm going to add one last thing. Hyper self-awareness, something that really changed for me the last few months is I'm really aware that if I'm checking like social media at night or checking my messages at night before I'm going to bed, I'm more sensitive. I'm kind of like more sensitive to what's out there, to what I'm seeing, to what people are saying. So, you know, if you're a person who's out in the social media world and you're doing business on social media, I mean, chances are you're going to get a negative message here and there. So if it's going to affect you before bed and not cause a very good day, like don't check your messages before you go to bed. I tend to turn my phone off or just ignore it. Like I give myself permission to have a great night by not checking that. Mm, I love it. Okay, what's yours? All right, my first one, I guess second one of this conversation would be this. Uh, Leave time for the miracles. I mean, literally build that time in. And here's where this came from. So this past year, you know, I wore like a badge of honor that I booked everything back to back to back Mm -hmm. to back to back. Like I am so productive, right? (laughs) And the problem was this, opportunities would show up and I could not take advantage of them Mm -hmm. because I had booked everything back to back to back to back thinking that's how I was going to be more productive. Well, Mm -hmm. here I am like muscling my way through the year towards success instead of leaving space and leaving time for the miracles to help me get Mm -hmm. to success. And here's a very specific example. So by the way, this phrase, leave time for the miracles, came from our friend, Jim Quick. He he said this to me and here's why he said it to me. He had called me in the morning on like a random Wednesday. And he's like, hey, listen, I'm going to be interviewing MySpace Tom. You guys remember MySpace Tom, the founder of MySpace, like the original social Mm -hmm. media? He was going to be interviewing him, but he needed to do it on the west side of LA. So he called me in the morning. He's like, hey, any chance I can use your guys' podcast studio today? Uh, I have to interview MySpace Tom. It has to be on the west side of LA. And he has to run to the airport shortly afterwards. That's why he has to be over here. And if you allow us to use your studio, Chris, he's agreed to do a interview on your show while he's there as well. So jackpot, mega awesome person that I could interview on my podcast, total legend, And unfortunately, I was booked back to back to back to back to back that day. And so I had to say, Jim, buddy, I'm so sorry. Not only can I not help you out because I'm using the studio with guests all day, but on top of that, I missed the opportunity to interview my space Tom. So I kind of let a friend down a little bit. I mean, not let him down, but you know what I mean? Like I wasn't able to help them in that Mm -hmm. situation. And I missed an opportunity to get an interview that I may not be able to get on my own. You know, here, this person would have been in the house, in the podcast studio here. So that's just like one of a million examples where I didn't leave space for the miracles. And Jim said to me in that time, he said, it was shortly after, but he says, hey, Chris, man, he said, you've got to leave space for the miracles, both before and after each one of your episodes. He said, that's when the great conversations show up. Mm. That's when some of the bonding shows up. That's when the opportunities show up. He said, "With if you don't leave space, then nothing good can come fill into that space. And so this year, I am leaving space for the miracles. I'm leaving time for the miracles when I build my schedule out with intention. Yeah, I think this is... So that's been big for me as well. I love that you point that out. And I get that sometimes you do have to... In Sometimes beginning a business, you do have to go back to back to back. You do. So, but I I even did this though when I used to book calls or when I used to book people... It, yes, it might have been a 45 minute thing that I was booking, but I'd leave like 90 minutes because, or, you know, depending on the calls, I'd give myself a little bit of room in between because number one, I think I've always kind of been a bit hyper self aware, but number two, it always gave me a little room to extend the conversation or to ride the magic out that was happening. Or maybe if a little collaboration was starting beginning there, I didn't have to rush off the phone or rush off of the Skype or whatever that is. And see, those were the opportunities I was missing. I would- would end my interviews. Now, here I am interviewing epic people, right? Yeah. That I do want to have a relationship. I would end them like this. Five minutes to the hour, mm. I'd be like, all right, Lori, thank you so much. Listen, I got another interview coming up. I got to go. So grateful. I'll let you know when this thing comes out. And then hang up on that one. Oh, man. And click, you know, uh, send on the next one and be like, hey, Lori, how's it going? I'm so excited to interview you today. I left no space. Wow, for yeah. the miracles. Mm-hmm. And so when I say leave space for the miracles, I mean, to a fault, I was back to back to back to back. And I know it cost me productivity mm-hmm. instead of earning me productivity. It's counterintuitive to what you think. Totally. Because it, we don't realize it, but opportunities are always coming for us. Like they're all around us. And it, the perfect opportunity is always like in your space. But what happens is a lot of times, like you said, like going somewhere or meeting people or 
what did I share with you? The puttering. Mm -hmm. So like leaving time to like putter in between in your day and um, leaving time in between if you're going to an event or whatever that is, like you don't know what's going to happen. So just leave a little bit of padding, even if you start out with feeling rushed, but leaving 15 extra minutes of padding, even if that means just to digest your food better. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of the ways, by the way, because you asked a question, you brushed over, and I don't think I really addressed it. And what you said, well, sometimes when you're just starting a business, you have to do this, right? Back to back. Although here's what I've learned. Hmm. There are way more things that everybody can be delegating. And this is not just for people with a business listening, by the way. Even like your busy mom, busy dad, anyone who wants a little more space in their life, there are way more things that you could be delegating that you're not because you've never Hmm. sat down to figure out, is this delegate worthy, right? And here's how you figure it out. It's real easy. Take your hourly wage or take your salary divided by 2080, which is how many hours somebody works in a year, or take your income goal divided by 2080, and that gives you your hourly value. If you can hire somebody to do whatever it is that you want to delegate for less than that hourly value that you're worth, then hire it out. Matter of fact, I say delegate anything that is not income producing or joy producing, Mm -hmm. right? You're robbing yourself of time with your family. You're robbing yourself of time to read. You're robbing yourself of workouts. You're robbing yourself of all these things because... You know, you you refuse to delegate the laundry. You mm-hmm. refuse to delegate the cooking. You refuse to delegate the shopping at the grocery store. You refuse to delegate these things that you'd be able to ha- trade for this joy producing or income producing time that you could get back. So as part of leaving space, or I should say creating space mm-hmm. for the miracles. And then the other one I mentioned earlier, but I am treating my yeses like gold bars mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. And that will help create more time for the miracles. That actually helps move into number my number three. What is it? It is minimizing and prioritizing your needle movers. Mm, okay, what do you mean? So we're all obsessed, especially I'm just... I don't want to speak for every woman, but especially as women with our to-do lists. feels so good to check things off. And um, I don't know if anyone's like me, but I used to have this running to-do list. Like it was every day and it would have literally like 40 things on it. I'm not even kidding. Like it'd be right down to, oh yeah, and straighten that picture that's hanging on the wall (laughs) under like these little tasks. And it would just keep rolling over every single day and I would rewrite it every single day. Like that to do, rewrite to do list. I don't know. Um, For some reason, it made me feel better. But in the end, it was making me feel terrible. So minimizing and prioritizing. So this goes back to my number one, the hyper self-awareness. Minimize your to-do list. And when I say minimize, like one to three things. Mm. If you're a beginner, you get one thing. That's it. I'm sorry. Let go of all of the other stuff because it's not real anyway. Like you are definitely not a new person yet. Like 2019 flipped, you're still the 2018 version of you unless you have shifted your identity through new actions. You're not yet a different person than last year. So make sure that if you're a beginner, you're just starting with one thing. If you've been doing this for a while, you can have like three. But really, that's like the max for me because a needle mover is something that's going to take almost all your willpower for the day. So as I was talking about the one to three hours of willpower that you get, because I don't know too many people who actually get their most productive hours, like more than that. Some people get four hours, some people maybe get five, like max production hours. Mm -hmm. Know what can fit in there. So for me, it's like two to three things, max. And if I'm being really honest, if it's big needle moving things, I really probably only get one a day, maybe. So minimize and prioritize. So then the prioritizing comes in where I already know my hours because of my hyper self-awareness that I've written down. So now I'm scheduling and prioritizing that thing into those hours and I'm doing it first. So it's going to be at the front end of my what's my word here? Most willpower (laughs) time. (laughs) So I'm probably going to schedule it early because I want to do the hard thing first. So if it's a a more tough thing, asking, um, writing an email, getting really focused on something, finishing part of some copy for a sales page or your book or whatever that is, like get that stuff done early and make sure that it's prioritized. It's interesting. So I just read an article on Mark Cuban. Everyone Mm -hmm. knows who Mark Cuban is. He said, which seems like the opposite of what everybody else, including myself, advises, but it kind of made sense in a weird way. They said, what's one of your productivity hacks? Mm. And he said, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do is I grab my phone, I open my emails while I'm still in bed. And right away, I was like, oh, that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. But he goes, I grab my phone, I open my emails immediately. 
and I respond to any emails that I think will slow me down later in the day, Mm. right? Any big things, any fires, anything that'll weigh him down. And you know, all of us, our, our intuition says, wait, you're starting out the, the day on a, on, on a bad foot right mm-hmm. away. But here's why he said he does it. He said, if he can get the big things out of the way or the things that are going to weigh down his mind, if he can get those out of the way, the rest of the day, he's cleared up all of that space mm-hmm. uh, and energy to do the things that he really wants to accomplish the most. And by the time he was done explaining it, I actually saw why it made sense. So it's kind of what you're saying is know when you're going to be effective Mm -hmm. and get the big, scary things done first. I I actually love that because you and I just took the human design test Mm -hmm. and it really talked about certain brains are like that. Like certain brains are literally like, okay, um, and I'm not being totally clear on this, but this is what I understood from it. It's like certain people want to get those things off their plate right away. Like it's a burning desire. (laughs) So just kind of, I think it just goes back to hyper- self awareness like who we're all built so different so some people who are like i remember like people were like if you're going to be part of the successful you know people you have to be part of the 4am club or the 5am club and yeah, some people me. were like that no i am when i wake up that early and i have tried it i even did like a yoga challenge Remember in Minneapolis where it was like 30 days i had to get up at like 4:30 in the morning or 5 in the morning i was like i've never been such a raging bitch in my life this is, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're saying this. This is not one of our six, but let's make this one like 3.A. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, don't be afraid to just do you. Question everything, right? Yeah. I'm so tired of everyone being like, well, this person said, get up at 5 a.m. to be successful. When really the way your body is made, because we're all made differently, mm-hmm. you have to sleep till seven or eight, or you have to get eight or nine hours of sleep in order to be productive. And the other person biologically just needs five. Yeah. Right? So- Let's stop doing things just because people are guilting us into doing them on social media. And let's start doing the things that we intuitively know will make us more successful, period. Totally. I mean, I have a girlfriend who literally like things just kind of come to her if she's taking care of herself. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, what if, and some people that's not the case at all. Some people are like, that would drive me crazy. I need to be like, do, 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 doing. And this is how things come to me. And other people are like, yeah, that's not me. I can't run that fast. So here's how I'm working this. So it's different. It's literally different for everyone. Yeah. All right. Should we move on number four? Yes, please. All right. (laughs) Where'd that voice come from? I don't know. By the way, Waffles is laying on my feet right now while we do this. It's the best thing ever. It's like Fuzzy slippers. Like what a great life. Could we just stop for 10 seconds of gratitude and be like, here we are in our podcast studio at home on a Sunday afternoon. I get to stare at my beautiful wife while we have an awesome conversation helping other people and my dog is laying on my feet. Stop, go on. Okay, well, Um, you keep that voice up. I I might have to move. It's it's like good voice, bad voice. I do all the bad voices. That goes back to bad, naked, good, naked. Yeah. All right, right, that's enough. Stop, I can't unhear it. Am I sexy? I can't unhear that. Okay, so, but I just want to point out, can you please just give the tiniest little glimpse into what our life used to be like when you'd be working all the time and you'd be flying around? So you can't just say the good without saying, hey guys, this is where we used to be. It was 10 years ago, which is not a very long time at all, that I was getting up and getting on the first plane out of town and leaving you in bed still in cold, Mm -hmm. cold, cold, cold Midwest in winter and going to some Minnesota. random city somewhere to shut down a bank branch or even before the recession, just to go somewhere and have meetings. Also, and I felt like I would move you to a new city and be like, hey, babe, go pick out a house, make a life. I got to go yep. and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And then you shut down. So when this was the final years, I'm just saying you, you would have to, because we you did have a thriving career for a while, which was amazing. But also that was really challenging too, because you were gone all the time mm-hmm. and you constantly had crazy deadlines and you were still traveling and- Stressed out. Late hours. I remember calling you at like seven and nine. So seven would be like when I would love for him to be home. Nine o'clock was when he would usually start coming home eight or nine o'clock because yep. you would have deadlines for the month that you'd have to always be reaching. Listen, I know we just got off into a tangent, but I think, I think that's if, we had to, to say. if we had to put a bow on this, it would be sending this message. Wh- whoever's listening, wherever you're at, if you're not quite satisfied with how life is unfolding for you right now, and this fits the theme of like having an epic year, right? The hacks have an epic year. If you don't like the way things are unfolding right now, you can change it. You can take control of it. And these six things that we're sharing, these will go a really, really long way 
in getting you there because that's what really what you and I do best. We just share the things that worked for, for us, taking us from point A where we didn't want to be to point B where we absolutely love being, mm-hmm. right? So these mm-hmm. things really work. Really work, you guys. It's a real thing and it might take longer than you think, but it also is going to go a lot faster than you think. Years fly by. So start implementing now. All right. So number four, here's what I'm going to start doing. And I haven't done this uh, in years prior. Okay. And I've seen so many of my uber successful friends do this on a regular basis. And so I thought to myself, why aren't I doing this? And that is track what matters most to you, right? So if you have goals this year, if, if you want to create change this year, I don't care what you want your year to look like. You have to track the actions and rate the actions on a regular basis that will slowly lead you to where it is you think you want to go. So let me give you a really silly, not silly, like my personal example. Every single Sunday, I just built a really easy spreadsheet. Guys, mm-hmm. I am simple, right? So You should make this an opt-in. It could be a... <laughs> It could be a whiteboard. It can be a spreadsheet. It can be a physical old school calendar. I don't care how you roll, right? So I just made a really simple Excel spreadsheet and I listed the things that I want to track. They're things like eat well, workouts, reading, meditating, marriage, having fun, advertising. Yes, I want to track. Did I advertise well that week? Because I think sales... What does that mean? Did I talk about some of the products that we have available for people because I think sales- Like on social media? Yes. Okay. Because I think sales is actually a loving act, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to do more of that on social media on a regular basis. What else is on there? I'm trying to remember like, oh, I have relationship outreach on there. Did I reach out to new people that I want to form relationships Mm -hmm. with, whether it's to have them on a podcast or go to a lunch or go to a dinner or something Mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, those are just some of the examples of things I have on a spreadsheet. Every Sunday, I'm just going and I'm putting a one, two, three, four, five. One, I totally sucked at it. Like I didn't do it that week. I, I totally forgot about it that week. Like, dude, that was a really piss poor for performance. Mm-hmm. Five, I knocked it out of the park. Right? I couldn't have done any better that week. And I'm just going to rate it. And the, obviously, mm-hmm. I'm going to track this weekly score and hope that the score continually goes up. Mm. And the idea is to have the high score. And I don't care how you guys track it. The whole point is this. What you concentrate on and track will move. Mm-hmm. What you concentrate on and track will move. So I'm going to track what matters most to me. Mm -hmm. I love that. You even said to go as far as like you want to get like some art made with your favorite, like stuff you want to check off or something. What was that? Piano lessons? No. Remember you wanted to like get a something painted with all of your list of important things for you to feel good. We were talking about that awesome piece of art that we were going to have somebody paint up. Yeah. So you can see it all the time Mm -hmm. because... Man, we are so like driven and goal oriented, yet we leave a lot on the table, I think, by not rewriting and seeing certain things all the time because it's really easy to write stuff down and then put it away. Well, I'm so guilty of saying, Ooh, this is the year I do this consistently. Yeah. And, you know, Monday, January 1st sounds like a great idea and uh-huh. I really believe in it. By, you know, Sunday, January 15th, I'm not even doing it or it's not even in my head anymore. Let me ask you a question about that though. So, like last year, I, took on playing guitar and I did like seven lessons Mm -hmm. and I was like, this was not the year. I got super overwhelmed. And for me, I knew it was not the year. I'm glad I went and got it and got it started and got like the, uh, like my curiosity started going, but I had enough grace to forgive myself and be like, okay, Lori, you're doing 5 million other things, put it away for a bit, but now maybe find the time to get it back out. How do you know when something is like, you know what I mean? Because we can get really eager. It can be like too much. Like when is something going to go on your list and you be willing to take it off? Well, action creates clarity. That's something you've taught quite a bit. So that was an example of you put it on your list. Mm -hmm. The action was you started doing it, right? You took seven guitar lessons. And the clarity was, do I like this? Yes. Do I have time for this this year? Absolutely not. So I'm taking it off the list. Yeah. And so if you're tracking this, just to take it a step further you would take it off of your tracker so it's not sitting there making you feel like shit or making you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. If you make a good conscious decision that came from action equaling clarity, then it's okay to take something off of your Mm, list. I love that But it's not okay to take something off of your list just because you said you're going to do it and you never, ever tried it. Mm -hmm. I love that answer. I did the same thing with hip hop classes too. I was like, whoop, wasn't the year, but I know I like it. (laughs) So, But this is the year I said I want to take piano lessons, right? I know that's not really going to happen unless I put this thing on my list and track it. Mm-hmm. It's true. And Give order it a, a piano. 
So when we're done with this, I have to order a piano, babe. Yeah, we're going to, great. We're going to have a keyboard sitting in the corner. Hopefully it gets played. Like right, a Tickle night. the ivories. <laughs> it's going on the list. Mark my nickname's my words. Ivory. <laughs> no, your nickname was Big Tips. <laughs> I get two nicknames. I think it was stick with Big Tips. It's okay. Ivory, Ivory Big Tips. What's number five? What's your next one? <laughs> my number five is to make sure I like and love myself first. Mm, expand. To question if I'm doing things because to get attention or to make other people like me or to people please or because other people are doing something and to really make sure it's because I like me and I like what I'm doing and it makes me happy. But this is also something that I know that makes me thrive. When I am following my happiness, I make other people happy. So I'm doing more things um, that are giving back, uh, such as being really excited about my podcast, wanting to find new ways to serve the community. Because when I like myself and when I am doing activities that really add to my happiness, it all overflows for me. And that's just always what it is. So when I really look at my schedule and I'm like, oh, I'm doing that because I'm worried about disappointing someone or I'm doing that because this person just won't stop asking. Like those should not make the cut anymore because I get resentful and then I get tired. And I've done that so often. And I'm not saying they don't sneak in because they do. And sometimes they're important. And I'm not saying don't ever return the favor because those things are definitely important as well. But really look looking at all of the extras that come in. So make more choices that make you happy? Yes. Yeah. You actually, you did start doing a really good job of that at the second half of last year. My God, let me tell you how hard it is though. Like people are disappointed. Like they don't always write nice stuff back. No, uh uh-uh. But remember, it's not make more choices that make them happy. Yeah. It's make more choices that make you happy. I'm definitely happy when I look at my day and it's not packed out with a million appointments of people I don't actually know. Okay, so this whole thing was six hacks to succeed this year. Yep. How does that help you succeed doing more things that make you happy? How does it help you succeed? I think it's the key to everything because when you don't have a solid foundation... Here's the thing. When you like yourself and when you are taking care of yourself, you have energy. And energy is our most important commodity, no matter what, hands down. You can have all the goals in the world, but if you feel tired or you feel bad, depressed, sad, anxious, all of the things that external things make you feel, when you're saying yes to the wrong things, when you're saying yes to more alcohol, to bad food, to sugar, you are saying no to your goals. So saying yet like, what makes me really like and value myself? What makes me really happy? That's when you just overflow and you also open up your channel to all of the actual ideas that are meant for you. Because I'll tell you when I feel like shit and when I'm saying yes to everything and I have no space and I'm exhausted, I can't actually hear what whatever you believe, God, source, divine. I'm not getting the communication from the channels that are actually my ultimate inspiration. And I believe that that's internal. Like I'm not getting the internal ideas. I'm really externally focused on what everyone else is doing and getting my ideas from there, which in turn, burn me out. This makes a lot of sense to me because I'm going to add something to this. People want to do business with somebody who is happy and like vibrating high. Mm -hmm. People want to be in a relationship with someone who's happy and vibrating high. People want to buy from somebody who's happy and vibrating high. People want to help out and give advice and be around somebody who's happy and vibrating high. So by you making the choices that put you first and make you a happy individual you're actually going to be a lot more successful because everyone's going to want to be in your life and lift you up. I love that. You want to hear like the most awesome mic drop like idea ever? No. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to see what you do if I said no. Yes, I want to hear it. So I was on a podcast with um, Wynn Claybaugh. Mm Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, he's like, no one's in the business of what they think they're in. Like, I'm not in the business of education. You're not in the business of self-development. He's like, we are all in the business of selling our energy. And I was like, oh my God, that is everything. So to make sure that you have max energy, it's like, that's it. And that's a Rob Dyrdek thing too. Like he's Mm -hmm. all about, he's not going to do anything that doesn't 
give him energy or give him life. Like oh. that doesn't make him feel like he's, he's crazy about militant it. Militant about it. He has what he calls his, his triangle on it. But I hope I'm not overstepping bounds here, but I think he's talked publicly about it, but like in Beverly Hills, his mm-hmm. house, his office, and then this little range in Beverly Hills, it forms a triangle and he operates so that he stays within his triangle during the day. So he can be close to his family, close to home and home early. Matter of fact, he doesn't start his day till 11 o'clock, just like us. Mm -hmm. He is militant about only doing the things that make him happy. And in return, he is crushing it. Yeah, that resonates with me. Yep. Crushing it does. Yep. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) No, but that really, really resonates with me. Like, and I do think it was important for me to go through the journey that I went through. So what would you say though to people who are, because her beginning phases were very different than this, but Mm -hmm. I do think it's the action creates clarity things. In the beginning, I just didn't know what to do. So you do have to say yes to a lot more, don't you think? Okay, this is a tough question. I know. Here's why. When do we get to break the rules to speed up our development? When do we get to give people the, hey, if I could go back and do this again, I would never do it this way, even though you feel like you have to. And so my answer is this, no. Like I, if I could go back and do it all over again, I wouldn't do it how we did it. I wouldn't take so long. I wouldn't give out so many yeses. I wouldn't book things back to back. I wouldn't sacrifice my happiness or my health for these extra meetings because now... Here's the problem. People are looking and say, well, you're already successful. That's why you can do these things. No, we're successful because we finally started doing these things, right? That's the difference. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? I'll tell you what comes first. When you finally figure out that these are the hacks that make you successful, however you determine success, then that's when everything starts falling into place, Mm. Right. So when you, to answer your question, when you're just getting started, are there a few things you have to do that you don't have to do once you're further along in your journey? Yes. Right. Sure. I'm not an idiot. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, challenge everything. Mm-hmm. Challenge everything because there are 900 million, quadrillion, Google gillion things that I did that I thought I had to do that did not move the needle. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I'm going to put a value on this. Ready? 90%. Mm. I am not shitting you. 90% of the things that we did when we were getting started in our journey did not move the needle, but I thought I had to do them. You know, the reason, so I'm sitting here kind of like yes and knowing, um, but the reason why I kind of just had a moment of yesing is because I look at like, I look at someone like our friend, Amanda Bucci, who's 25, Mm -hmm. who like started all of these hacks early, like really understanding these things earlier on and her success like skyrocketed because she's done so much of these things. Like when I was 25, I was, you know, like definitely swinging from the chandeliers, drinking 40, playing Edward 40 hands for sure. That was one of my favorite things about you, by the way. (laughs) I can bring that back. (laughs) If you guys don't know what Edward 40 hands is, it's when you take um, masking tape and tape 40s to your hands and no one can let you out of them until They're until they're both gone. And if you don't know what 40s are, they're the 40 ounce cans of malt liquor. That's not a can, it's a glass bottle. One tape to each hand. They have cans yeah. too. Oh. Yeah. Old English would be the brand that you definitely want to avoid. You can't <laughs> even drink one of them without being flat on the theater floor. Okay, we're making people dumber, not smarter. Oh, oh, sorry. All right. That's my other podcast. <laughs> okay, so, but, but talking about that, like one of the biggest growth hacks. Go. What is it? Oh. <sighs> One of the oh, um, more no's than yeses. Yep. More no's than yeses. When I was getting started, I felt like I had to say yes to so many things to expose myself to so many opportunities. The answer is the reverse of that. No will get you more powerful results than yes. Yeah, I think it, looking back at our journey, I think the the thing that we did was we went wide instead of deep. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. So picture like this machine gun spreading out the bullets of yeses everywhere, hoping mm-hmm. you hit something instead of this really surgical sniper type aiming on what you really want. Yeah, and we literally had some really great things, but didn't focus on them. I think of my, I mean, just real quick, like my monthly program. If I would have really focused on that, it would have exploded even more. I can't even imagine where it would be at right now. But because I just kept doing so many other things, it just didn't get the attention. And mm-hmm. my, I had no focus. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. All right, number six under the six hacks to succeed this year. Join a mastermind. Yeah. I am not kidding. Like in my DMs at Instagram, in my emails, 
all, any way that people can get a hold of me, the number one question is, it always starts like this. Well, what if there's nobody in my area? Well, what if this? Well, what if that? Like, where's the proximity to the people I can learn from? Mm-hmm. All of that is in a mastermind. And we practice what we preach, right? We've been a, a members of masterminds for years now. And it's been absolutely one of the shortcuts to our success. It's been absolutely one of the shortcuts to, heck, half the things that we're teaching right now, we've learned in masterminds, Mm -hmm. right? And then applied them, had the breakthroughs. Matter of fact, had the tribe to support us saying, no, it's okay. I know this doesn't feel comfortable at first. It's okay. Move forward anyways, because it worked for me. Those ideas and that support came from masterminds. Mm -hmm. So joining a mastermind is absolutely the sixth hack to your success this year. Now, by the way, there's all sorts of types of masterminds out there. Like mm-hmm. I know that we're kind of talking about a business mastermind right now, but there are yoga masterminds. There are spiritual masterminds. There's the type of mastermind that you write about in your book mm-hmm. where you, Lindsay and Danette have been doing that three-person mastermind for years now, every all other week. business or life or whatever. Yes. Yeah. So join or form a mastermind. And because it means so much to us, you and I, finally decided to build an entry level, an early stages mastermind for anybody that's kind of looking like, how do I get started in one? How do I find one? So here's here's why we, by the way, spill the beans. Yay, we built an entry level mastermind. I'm like, so excited. Let me just say why I'm excited is because I... I don't do, I did one-on-one coaching for a year. I don't do it anymore because I prefer group connection Mm -hmm. because I think that the, um, all of the information and the keys are in groups of people. Like I think we all unlock it together because I've been in mastermind, as far as I can remember, like Jack Canfield's was basically a year long mastermind. I don't want this to turn into an ad, but I'm going to turn it into an ad. Here's why. Like this is really, remember sales is a loving act. I agree. Right? So go to town. Here's the bottom line. If you don't have the right tribe of people to lift you up when you're trying to go chase down a goal that might be you know, not necessarily understood in your current tribe, mm-hmm. then you're doomed. And if you can't form that group of people around you, the next best thing you can do is invest in that group of people. So where do you find a group of people that understand the challenges that entrepreneurs have, that understand the challenges of uber-motivated people. In that, a mastermind. <laughs> yes. I, I, like want the, I want the keyboards that you hit the button. Like I want to become that podcast that you hit a button and it's like, does sound effects. Oh my God. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't get this keyboard because all of your podcast episodes- In a mastermind. going to have these weird 90s <laughs> keyboard things or whatever. Okay. Keep going. Oh, I mean, now I even forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, he's mad. Okay, but I want to talk about Chris and I literally have gotten every, I I would say majority of our strategies from masterminding, whether it was something like what we are putting out there or whether it was getting in a group together and having a specific set of tracks and strategies. Because what you were saying is if you don't have the people around you who believe what you believe or where you're going or who are going where you're going, you're not going to make it and you aren't. And that's just one of the many challenges. Like, listen, when you've got really big goals, and I'll be honest, you're probably not listening to this podcast if you don't have really big goals, right? Yeah. So when you have really big goals, I'm speaking to you right now. One challenge of many is what you just said, finding the people that understand how you think and why you're acting the way you do and reinforcing that. That's one challenge. Another challenge is so many people have started what I call accidental businesses. What's an accidental business? So let's say they wanted a little side hustle, make some extra money. And they're Mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I could really coach on this one thing. So they start coaching on this one thing and they make 10 grand, then they make 25 grand, then they make 50,000, then they make $75,000. And before you know it, they're like, Whoa, I've got myself quite a good business here. I'm making $75,000 a year doing some coaching, except it's an accidental business because you never started from day one applying the foundations of a real business, right? You didn't know if you should start as an LLC or an S corp or a C corp. You didn't know if you should have any insurance protecting you. You didn't build a marketing plan. You haven't learned or mastered social media yet or how to sell on social media. You don't know how to build funnels or you don't know how to build Facebook ads. You don't know how to Um, do all of these different things when you have what's called an accidental business. And most people, 75% of people, I kid you not, 
have accidental businesses. And this Mm. is a good thing, by the way. I applaud this. You realize, oh my God, I have value that I can exchange for money. And you started doing that. You started exchanging your value for money. And in return, you've got this business, except now it's time to go back and lay down the foundation that's going to hold the house up, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot build a business on quicksand. You cannot build a business on a house of cards. And you certainly don't want to go back and build the foundation after you are way too far into this business. And so what Lori and I did is we built everything that we wished existed when we were getting started, right? So videos on exactly what what to do, where to start, uh, Zoom calls with Q&A, in-person meetings out here in LA. And we packed it into this five-month mastermind for anybody. Now, here's really who we, we aim this for. For anybody between 50 and $250,000. Anyone who is making between 50 and $250,000, any entrepreneurs in that range, that's who we built this thing for. And it really was a component of a few things. Number one, it just didn't exist, right? When we were getting started, I wish something like this existed. Mm -hmm. Number two, we get so many questions on how can I coach with you guys? Well, my only option so far had been the really really elite mastermind. Mm-hmm. And that costs $30,000 and up, yeah, right? That That's for, amazing. for people crushing it already. Mm-hmm. And the only other option besides that was individual coaching, which you don't do. Mm-mm. And I only take two people every six months. And that is very, very cost prohibitive. And so what's the next best way for them to coach with us? We decided to create this entry level mastermind so that they can not only have us, but a carefully curated tribe of other business people that understand them. Hmm. So I'm obsessed with it because you have your elite mastermind, yep. which is literally mind blowing. I get to go to the dinners. I don't necessarily go to the days. Um, once in a while, I get to go to the days if, if I have it on my calendar and I, I'm able to make it. But the massive changes that have happened in there, just the growth for people, not only personally, but in their business. What has been able to go on in these people's businesses is my literally mind-blowing. And I'll tell you that I think you are one of the best people to hold space and breathe belief and connect with people. Like You are a net worker. You go out and you find the best people and bring them in to add massive value. I mean, just being alone and booking with one of your teachers would be like the price of entry for the whole year. Well, and and to speak to that, we're bringing in specific video training being made by all of our, I don't know what else to call them, celebrity entrepreneur friends, where they're saying, what I teach best is this, and I'm doing a video just for your new entry-level mastermind. Mm -hmm. So you get access to these people that we hang out with, that we get advice from, that we share ideas with Mm -hmm. in this mastermind that you would not be able to get, period. So these are all things that in the beginning, if I could have had this all put into one place, I probably would have saved five years or more. Yeah, because there there are things like this. It's going to be how to monetize an idea, how to turn an idea into a product, how to build an email list, how to create a funnel that sells for you, um, how to master social media and social media sales and social Mm -hmm. media growth. Um, it'll be how to properly scale a business, you know, what to do with your taxes, cash flow, how to keep a good set of books, uh, and, and how to find the right person to keep a good set of books, Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Um, God, what else is it going to be? Oh, sales. We're teaching yeah, how to be comfortable uh, with sales. sales and how to sail. Like, <laughs> yes. Because that's a big hang up for a lot of people, right? And I want to add this though. You know how even when you said it in this podcast, you're like, I think sales is a loving act. And I'm like, hell yes, amen. Let's go to town. I didn't, I was not born with that belief. Mm-hmm. You guys, even five years ago, I was like, oh, I'm still a little nervous or I still feel like I'm selling. And now I'm like, no, I'm sharing me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm actually selling what I'm good at. And this is so important because it's going to help move someone forward. I got that belief by hanging out with other people who believe the same thing. Now it's rooted in me because I know that my community feels the same way. I know it's a safe space to go and build that belief. I know it's safe to start letting that out, to trying it on, to learning how to do it, to learn how to do it even more. And And that's why you have to be around other people. That's why you have to be around other people. This belief is not going to bloom in um, soil that is not supportive. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And and so here's how we decided to package that up. Because remember, 
it's a sensitive time when, when you're an entrepreneur and you're between that fifteen two hundred fifty thousand dollar range. Yeah, that's you have very little time to sacrifice, right? You need the best lessons in the fastest way to digest them. You can't drag it out and you can't have a lot of distractions. And so we kept that in mind when we built this. I mean, when I say we built everything we wish existed when we were just getting started, we played stupid idea time and said, what if this, what if this, what if I had this, what if I had that? And we packaged it in this five month mastermind because five months is the perfect amount of time to get that fast crash course on the fundamentals Mm -hmm. that you're probably missing or wondering how other people are doing it and you're not so that you're not dragging out these lessons over a year. You're not dragging them out over two years, right? You're getting it in that five month period and you're doing it in the form of Zoom calls twice a month. You're doing it in the form of not one, but two three-day meetings out here in Los Angeles with you, Lori, with me, with our celebrity teacher friends, with uh, experts in each type of industry that we're trying to teach. Those are my favorite part, Mm -hmm. by the way, those in-person weekends out here with us. Can Um, we talk about that for a minute? Yeah, go for it. Because I think it's the most important part. Because when I join Masterminds, I'm not as much of an online person. So this is going to speak to both categories of people. Some people in the Masterminds that we've been in the past, like thrive with the Zoom calls and with the group Facebook and all of that stuff. And while I get so much value from those things, I don't necessarily get my majority of value. My majority of value comes with the in-person stuff because I'm like, oh, shit balls on fire. I have to be ready or do this thing, this goal that I set for when I go to the in-person thing. Like I feel burning, scary accountability knowing that I have to go stand in front of the room and let them know if I reached this goal or not, depending upon how it's set up. Yeah, you know what? You are so right because... There are a lot of good programs out there to learn business, right? But if I'm just being fully transparent, I am tired of the notion that you can put everybody into a closed Facebook group and do a few Zooms with some Q&A and expect them to have massive business growth because not everybody learns that way. And even if you learn during that hour, you don't go apply it, right? So you need a combination of, of course, that online piece. Of course. But that in person piece where somebody physically is there holding you accountable, cracking you open, removing limiting beliefs, which is a big thing that we'll do, and then filling that space back in with the actual how to, right? There's, mm-hmm. It's so different in person. That's why we actually have the two in-person meetings in the five-month period, not just one. Mm-hmm. Okay. A couple more things about that because I think in person is literally for most people, this is how we learn. That's totally how I learn is actually in person, hands-on, trying it on. And I know that there's different exercises that will be done. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, when I'm doing um, actual exercises, that's when I understand. So there's a difference between actually learning and then understanding it in yourselves because maybe you've done role play or you've practiced a script with somebody Mm -hmm. or you've actually gotten up and walked around the room and tried different things or you've heard it, seen it, felt it in person. And I think it's so incredibly important to know that you will actually be like tangibly feeling, learning and trying it on. Yeah. Because it's it's the adult learning model. Like mm-hmm. adults learn differently than when we were kids. And heck, I'd even argue that children are not being taught very effectively right now, right? The, the whole oh, hell yeah, lecture, there's studies on it. Yeah, lecture, take notes and memorize. Like that does no. not work to learn most things, especially a business where you're supposed to go execute in a very elite way afterwards, right? Be able to actually execute on it. So that happens in person. Another thing is I can say that all of our really good friends and people that we meet with all the time have come from masterminds Mm -hmm. because you want to be, you know, when I'm like, for the most part, when I'm even like on a snowboard trip or drinking champagne or like hanging out, we love what we do. So I want to also be like, yes, you can have fun, but also you have so much in common with these people because they're doing the same thing as you. So it's not just like we're like at a dinner and you know, you're know you drinking your face off and people aren't happy or they're not doing what they don't like or their relationships aren't thriving. You're not having yeah quality conversations. So now it's kind of like, hey, we can be friends and have these super quality conversations. That it's almost awesome. goes back to what I was saying in the beginning was like, join a mastermind. And one of the biggest reasons is if you live in LA here, it's pretty easy to find like-minded entrepreneur friends, right? That's why we enjoy living here. If you live in New York, it's pretty easy to find like-minded entrepreneur friends. But we've lived 
in many places in the country. And we realize, and we hear this a lot from people who listen to the shows, it's not always easy to find people in your local area that understand your style and desire to do business. Mm -hmm. And so to find that tribe, you have to go where that tribe is literally carefully curated and put together, Mm -hmm. or you won't find those like-minded people. Mm -hmm. It's like finding a needle in the haystack. This is the shortcut to finding them. And honestly, when we were in Minnesota or Wisconsin, events were what kept us going. Yep. It's what lit us on fire and it's what kept us going. Because all of a sudden you walk into a room of people who think exactly like you, except mostly they think bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's the first time that you're like, what? This is acceptable and they're thinking bigger and they're loving their life more. This is out of control. And And if you don't know that exists... You're only going to go with what you see. I know. And the accountability piece. Yeah. You don't walk into that room of people that crack you open and make you think bigger. You don't walk into that room without doing what you said you're going to do since the last meeting. Yeah. That accountability piece is so powerful because entrepreneurship can be a lonely sport. Oh, It's very easy to take the shortcuts and not do what you need to do and not do the scary stuff when you're sitting alone by yourself in a family room or some kind of rent to office. Cry a lot. (laughs) <laughs> I cried so much and I I like binge ate and cried and did all of the things that you do when you're alone in your house feeling totally isolated and alone. Terrible, terrible place to be. What I want to know though, Chris, you talked about who this was for and I want you to get more into that too, but who is this not for? So this is not for somebody that is looking for the very first idea. Like okay. this is for anyone who is already making fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars in their entrepreneurship journey. Okay, mm-hmm. it's a chance for them to go back and make sure they have laid down all the foundations that they might have forgotten, and then to learn all the hacks that's going to accelerate them. Yeah, this is not for someone who has not taken action in any area of their life and is like, all of a sudden, I'm going to pay this amount and take action. Yeah, no, not, not going to happen. This is for somebody who already has a little bit of momentum and they feel like they're stuck. Yep. A little bit of momentum and they've plateaued. A little bit of momentum and they're like, and they feel alone. Mm -hmm. A little bit of momentum and they're like, wait a minute, why is that person on a rocket ship? And I feel like I'm doing the same things that I'm not. It's for that person. It's where we kind of lift the veil on everything, expose those those blind spots that you have because, hey, no one's shined a a, a flashlight on it before for you, right? It's not your fault. So we shine a light on those blind spots. We say, hey, this is the only piece you're missing. And Mm -hmm. it becomes the, oh my God, game changing moment. Yeah. Totally. I also think this is not for the person who beats themselves up if they don't hit a goal or don't reach the goal when they get in person. It's the person who's really ready to grow and see the blind spots and have external people look at your business and be like, this is where you could do better. Yeah. And it's not It's not for the person who is selfish with their journey. This is all about collaboration. Like Half the value of a mastermind is not just all of the teaching and all the lessons and all the accountability. Half the value is that now you are in a very powerful room of other people that are good at things that you're not. So you get to collaborate, Mm -hmm. right? So you're usually one person away from your missing piece, usually one introduction away from somebody you need to meet. And that is one of the biggest, most powerful things of the right types of masterminds. I agree with that. In the right rooms, your energy output will be returned. So it's not for the person who is... Like Something. coming in saying, yeah, exactly. It's an equal like energy exchange. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So even in the beginning, you have to have faith that your energy will be returned. Yep. Yep. Equal energy exchange. Well, listen, everybody can go check this early stages mastermind out. It's we're we're out of our mind. Geeky, Most of all, excited. I'm so excited to be in rooms with all these people and spending weekends and having amazing dinners and champagne. And if you don't drink champagne, kombucha or <laughs> water or coffee, like I want to drink all of the beverages with you. Yeah. So if you've ever wanted to drink all of the beverages with Lori, this is your way to do so. I love talking about ideas in business and I, I'm i like obsessed. I literally just want to be in rooms with people because that is when all of the ideas explode, you guys. Yep. It's the energy. It's the collective. It's all of these people move. Why do you think they get all of those monks together just to meditate? It's because that energy actually shifts the planet. Yeah, it totally So does. when you get the same energy in one room, it's an actual vibration and thought process that you're just on a freaking roll. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. You, I, you could not have said it better than that. If, if you're ever wondering what the magic is behind a business taking off, I think it's that. 
the yeah, vibration the of the energy, mm-hmm. the, the collective. That's the magic piece behind it that you can't see, feel, or touch. No. So you guys, we are uh, honestly, this is one of the, this is probably the top three most exciting things we'll do all year. Yep. Um, and I'm thrilled about it because I finally get to really tangibly help the exact audience that I want to be helping. And I'm so thrilled. I so know. where can they go? All right. Go check out all the details at fastfoundations.com. I mean, this is literally what it sounds like. We're going to give you all the foundations that'll make you stable and then scale quickly in a very quick way. So fastfoundations.com, all the information is there. And I want to talk about the investment for a moment yep. because this is one of the times where we said, how do we over deliver and maybe even underprice this thing a little bit so that anybody that actually wants to get in can get in. And so we created the free payment program over the five months. Uh, We priced it below market value compared to what all of the investment levels are uh, with everybody else out there that offers similar masterminds because we wanted everyone to be able to access it. And so when you go look at the program at fastfoundations.com and you're like, wait a minute, I get this private library of lessons just for this thing. And I get these live Zoom calls with them. And I get these not one, but two three-day events with them where we're rolling up sleeves and working on our business. Mm-hmm. For this small of an investment, it doesn't seem right. Trust me, it's right. It's the way we wanted to price this because we know what it was like getting started. We don't want you to invest in something that costs so much money that now you don't have money to scale your business, right? It does no good to get the ideas and not be able to pay to execute on the ideas. So we even took that into mind and priced it accordingly because this is the way that we want to serve. This is one of the ways we want to give back this year. I will say for some people, depending on their their price range, this might feel like a massive investment. And I want to talk to that too, because that was important for me when I first invested, because I I needed something that would calm me to the plate. Like that's who, so talking about number one, be, have hyper self-awareness. I'm hyper self-aware now that I have to invest and take big, like bigger leaps than what I'm used to taking in order for me to show up. So I think that's something I just. Well, you don't show up unless you really have skin in the game. Exactly. Right. You don't show up when you're interested in something. You show up when you're committed to something. Yes. And one of the best ways, okay, so there's these pain points out there. And I love these little tangents we go off on, but you ever hear the phrase, good is the enemy of great? I a lot of you one. listening, things are pretty good, right? Your business has momentum. That's good. You're making some income either as your main thing, or your side hustle. That's good. Like things are going well for you. The problem is you're not going to go to great. You're not going to go where you really want to go unless you have the pain to push you to do the scary things, unless mm-hmm. you have the pain to push you to um, do the things that you may not be doing right now. Because as Tony Robbins teaches, we only make choices either to gain pleasure or to avoid pain. And the yeah. stronger of the two is making choices to avoid pain. And so how do you create pain when things are good? You manufacture artificial pain points, such as having skin in the game, an investment, or maybe being around a, a group of other people, talented entrepreneurs that are going to make you show up bigger than you have mm-hmm. to when you're alone in your family room. Right? Amen. You, you literally create these little artificial pain points to force you to a take enough action to get too great. And that is, that's why we designed it this way. Man, I love that. I've never heard of that manufactured pain. You that's exactly what I do in my life without having the perfect word for it. Otherwise you stick around pretty good. Oh yeah, you know? I manufacture a lot of pain all, all the time because that's what motivates me. Like, yeah, but not, it's not like a horrible pain. But anyway, yeah. All right, so here's the bottom line. <laughs> um, because it's a mastermind, there's going to be very... A limited, limited number of spots, right? We can't mm-hmm. work with a trillion people and get any results. So to keep the integrity of the program, there's not that many spots and they're going to go really, really, really quickly. This is like letting the cat out of the bag right now. And by the time people hear this, we'll have talked about it on social media, maybe for a few days. We already have people in it. I know. And you haven't even like I know. released it. Nope. They, they found it and signed up. <laughs> so limited number of spots available. They're going to go really, really quickly. If you're interested, go to fastfoundations.com, check it out and just click the invest button. And there's even a button on there, by the way, that says, I have more questions. And that email goes right to us and our team so we can answer your questions. So do not leave that site without clicking one of those two buttons. Either I have more questions or I'm ready to go. And I would probably lean towards the, I'm ready to go. Let's sign this bad boy up button because 
honestly, these things are going to go so quick. Mm -hmm. You guys, we're so excited. And we hope that whether you do this or not, create your own, create your own accountability and mastermind this year. I'm telling you, it's all about collaboration. If that feels scary for you, lean in, uh, connect with people because we don't have the answers alone. Like literally, that's not how we're designed. Nope. We unlock each other's answers. We unlock ideas. So even if you think you're doing it alone, you're probably reading a book from someone or listening (laughs) to a podcast and that's how you're unlocking your answers. So look at your track record. If that really unlocks a lot for you. Imagine what happens when you are in person. There's an actual energy that is exchanged that you don't get that's the same as just a podcast or a book. So you guys, whether it's our mastermind or somebody else's, we have so many different masterminds that we've loved. Go ahead and reach out, say more questions, send us anything that you want because the more that you reach your goals and you build your dreams and you build your business, the more everyone is benefited. We hope you guys have loved our six hacks to have a more successful year this year. They've worked for us. I promise they're going to work for you guys. And just know that we love and appreciate every single one of you that puts your trust in us to try these things. And it's why we continue to do what what we do because it's where our fulfillment comes from. So thank you for that gift. Thank you guys so much and happy new year. Adios. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.